So today we are going to learn about bacterial bioremediation. Bioremediation is the removal, conversion, or reduction of waste or pollutants with the use of organisms. Yes, Lisa? Are there any other kinds of bioremediation other than like bacterial bioremediation? Yes, there's um, the use of bioremediation with plants or fungus, but this presentation focused specifically on bacterial bioremediation. There are three main types of bioremediation. There is natural attenuation, which is the monitoring of natural bacteria in the environment, and those are called in situ bacteria, which are natural bacteria. There is biostimulation, which is monitoring of natural bacteria with the addition of fertilizers or other things to enhance bioremediation. And lastly, there's bioaugmentation, which is the introduction of foreign species which are ex situ bacteria in order to bioremediate an area. Here is a picture of workers using pseudonomets, which is a very popular bacteria to use in bioremediation to help to clean oil in soils. This is a diagram of bioremediation. It shows the original contaminant right here. These are, this is chlorine coming off as a byproduct. And all bacteria use oxygen, and here is the final um, outcome of it. And one of the most common uh, byproducts of bioremediation is methane gas, which is one of the downsides of bioremediation because methane gas can help contribute to global warming. This is another diagram. This cycle right here is called the Krebs cycle, and this is the cycle that all bacteria go through while eating any sort of food. And these are the four things that they use during the Krebs cycle. And this is at the top a hydrocarbon, which is like oil or plastic. And down here is what they use and growth of the bacteria. And CO2 and water are byproducts. So there are lots of types of bioremediation in that they can bacteria can bio, bioremediate a very large variety of pollutants because since they have enzymes which are decomposing the pollutants, since enzymes are so widely varied, there is a very large variety of things that they can bioremediate. So there is heavy metal bioremediation, which converts dangerous metals into their elemental form, which is less dangerous. There is oil bioremediation, which like I said earlier, involves the decomposition of hydrocarbons, which is what oil is composed of. There is um, detergent, which is often used in oil to help the bacteria um, access the oil, because when oil mixes with water, it's difficult for the bacteria to access it. And there is plastic bioremediation, which is very similar to oil bioremediation because they're both composed of hydrocarbons. This is a diagram of hydrocarbons. As you can see, plastic has a very, very long chain. Hydrocarbon just means a chain of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms. And the more complex the chain is, the more difficult it is to break it down. So here are some more types. There's bioremediation of explosives like TNT. Um, this helps with like war zones where explosives are left over in the environment. And there's radioactive waste bioremediation, which is one of the most difficult because it's very difficult to find bacteria that can survive the radioactive material that they're biodegrading. But there are some bacteria that can do that. This is a benzene ring, and that is what explosives are made out of. And they, since they're locked together in this ring, they are also very difficult to bioremediate. So there are many reasons why bioremediation is important. Um, first of all, it's a lot better than its alternatives. Usually when we throw things away, they get incinerated, which has very, very bad effects on the environment. And if we don't incinerate it, then they're just left there in the environment for animals to um, ingest or for humans to ingest, which can cause many health problems. And bacteria can often reduce um, these pollutants to have less harmful byproducts than the original pollutant. Um, but as I said earlier, sometimes methane and other dangerous chemicals are released, which is a downside. Um, so do you have any questions?
How often is this used today? It's being used increasingly more as we develop the technology, and especially since pollutants are becoming more of a problem, we need to use it more often. But I think that we're not using it as much as we could, and I think it would be a good idea to investigate it further because it's so helpful. So now we are going to do a simulation of bioremediation. This sand represents the soil in the environment, and this colored sugar represents the pollutant. So we're going to mix the two together. And as you might imagine, it would be very difficult to individually take out every single piece of red pollutant. So instead, bioremediation allows you to rid, of, rid the environment of all of the pollutants easily. So go ahead and pour some of this water, pour some of this in here, the water in there, yeah. And that simulates bacteria being put into the environment. So, as time goes on, bacteria will degrade the pollutants, or the water will dissolve the sugar, and the colored water that's left over represents the byproducts from bioremediation, such as methane. 